Uh, I'm sure that the other speaker will, will be joining us very, very soon. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much for joining us for our Meet the Member event for February, uh, our first one of the year. I hope your year is off to a, a fantastic start. Um, and you haven't been, if you're in Sydney, I hope you're not flooded. If you're in Melbourne, I hope the fires are subsiding. If you're in WA, I hope you open your, well, you probably opened your borders by now, thank God. And if you're in Queensland, yeah, bloody hot up there, isn't it? And if you're in Adelaide, oh, even worse. Um, but it's fantastic to see so many of it on your on the call. Uh, great to see so many familiar faces as well as many new faces. Uh, for any of you who have not been on this call before, my name is Paul Wright and I'm the Head of Commercial Partnerships for the Australian British Chamber of Commerce. This event is a great way for us all to learn more about a select group of our chamber members. Each one of our members up in different industries and they're gonna give a great three minutes update on their companies, who they are, the service they offer, and more importantly, who they're wanting to connect with. And what we always say on these calls is it's great if partnerships are able to be made between any of you on the call today, fantastic. But what I also say as well is please, we all have fantastic networks. We all have very, very diverse networks. It's a great opportunity to hear from our speakers. And even if you can't utilize their services or, 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 or the product that, they, that they're offering, I'm sure that you have some great contacts within your arsenal of, uh, of, of black books and things like that. That would be great for you to, uh, to open those up to, to our members. You know, we, we want to make sure that we're all helping each other. We're all assisting each other and making sure that business is being done. These events have always been extremely successful uh, in generating new partnerships, but also just new relationships as well. Uh, so that the next time you're attending one of our events, whether it's here in Sydney or, or Melbourne or Perth or Brisbane or, or, or Adelaide or even Canberra, uh, that hopefully you'll see one of their faces and you'll remember that you met each other on this call. So now, what I will also ask is, can everybody put their um, uh, their call onto mute uh, so that we don't have any background noise while we're, our speakers are speaking? That would be fantastic. And with our speakers, as I've said, you have three minutes. It's a great opportunity for our uh, callers for the rest of our attendees, your wonderful audience here, to really hear from yourselves, really connect with you, which is why we don't do PowerPoint presentations, things like that. With the three minutes, I do have to be brutal on the three minutes because we want to keep the time. So I will have a stop clock next to me. And when it's coming time for you to finish, I will hold up this bell. And if you don't finish in time, then I will ring this bell. Can everybody hear that bell? Well, if I do that, then that means that, uh, that it's time to finish. Uh, so we've got 11 fantastic speakers today. Uh, as I say, we'll do them one by one. And then when we've all of our finishers, all of our speakers, sorry, have finished, I will then open up to the floor for questions and answers. So please start thinking of some great questions for some of our chamber members. Um, and then at the very, very end of this, when we all close off, I'll then be sending out a full list of who all of our speakers were and their contact details, just in case any of you would like to obviously keep those relationships and keep those conversations going as well. So to start off with, my first victim, um, and it couldn't be to a, a nicer gentleman, uh, Mr. Tom Hitchcock. Tom is the Managing Director of Purple Patch Consulting. Now, Tom, you have to keep it to three minutes. I know it's difficult because you're, you're a talker, and that's one thing I love about you, Tom. But your three minutes starts now. I've clicked my stopwatch. I will do this within three minutes. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, and thank you to the Chamber for the support you've given me so far and everybody for attending. Um, uh, as Paul said, I'm the Managing Director of a company called Purple Patch Consulting. I'd just like to start with a question. Does anybody know what Purple Patch is? Does anybody want, do you want to share it? No, I'm not. No, I'll, I'll let you share it, Tom. <laughs> Okay, all right. Some people know, some people don't. A purple patch is a terminology which represents a run of good luck or good fortune, okay? We've decided to name our company that because we're in the business of helping companies grow through their people, okay? Um, we're a recruitment agency front-facing, and the name aligns really nicely with growth uh, uh, through people. OK, now, our main point of difference, if you're going to remember anything about us as a recruitment agency, is we've got a trademark called Omni Recruitment. OK, uh, we're very proud of this. We protect this and it's a very strong USP of ours. And what that is, is we're the only agency in Australia which offers a multi-model approach. So what this means is what you know about a recruitment agency, we do cover that 
but you also have other options which you're probably less familiar with and don't realize that you have that accessibility and support within the world of recruitment. Um, so if anybody wants to reach out and make contact about more information on those models, I'm always open and we we'll make sure that you've got the right model that's fit for purpose for yourselves. Okay. Um, however, I've only got one real takeaway that I'd like to have um, with people here, and this one's a little bit non-transactional. Okay, so a little known fact that I've just started doing is a professional PhD. Um, it's a neuroscience PhD, which I'm doing with the University of New South Wales, and it's piggybacking on the work of um, five professors over 15 years, okay, um, which has been published in the Harvard Business Journal, and they're working on organisational wisdom, okay, and they've built um, a, a wisdom index, okay. Now, I'm taking this from hypothesis into the more pragmatic sense of the world of work and business. And what we're looking for is we're looking for host companies as diverse as possible that would love to have um, the wisdom, the organization, organizational wisdom verified for their, their organization. OK, so how wise the DNA of your business is. Um, and it's a, it's a fascinating study. Um, it costs nothing. There's no charge. It's non-transactional. It's purely for the research purposes, and it's extremely easy to implement. So there's loads of value there, but you'll also complement personally my PhD, but also 15 years of study. So that's my offer to all members. Good job, Tom. There we go. Just on time. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mr. Tom Hitchcock. Uh, now, do we have Angus Stewart on the call as yet? No, nope, that's absolutely fine. We'll come back to you, Angus. So our next speaker. Oh, was that Angus? No. Uh, so our next speaker is Ram Nadu. Ram is the business development manager for WA and Asia Pacific at Aspen Medical. So Ram, if you could take yourself off mute and then your three minutes start now. Uh, thanks, Paul. Good day, everyone. And my name is Ram Nadu and I'm the BDM for WA and Dayback Market as Aspen Medical. For, for those who don't know Aspen Medical, we are a global company with our operations in 20 countries and we employ more than 4,000 people. So I, we provide range of health services. So it ranges from aeromedical evacuation to healthcare solution to advisory services. And quite honestly, the list is pretty comprehensive. I'll just give you a few examples uh, to make you understand the scope of work we do globally. In the past few months, we have won some you know, important contracts. So I, we established dedicated telehealth services for US military personnel facing mental health challenges. And we have provided health services and clinical staff for United Nations in Somalia, or maybe the just flu vaccination or pre-employment medical in Australian companies. So in a nutshell, if I have to say what Aspen does is we are an outsourced medical service company and we deliver everything when it comes to healthcare. So I, I'm gonna to take today's opportunities to specifically focus on our occupational health division called Aspen Corporate Health. So what we do is we try and keep our staff healthy keeping them healthy is paramount and having a proactive healthcare program designed to minimize risk at work is an absolute smart move. And that's where we can come in and offer a tailored corporate health solution to meet every business need. So what do we do? So we do quite a lot of things. So if I need to pick few pre-employment medical we do, so what it does is pre-employment medical will provide a baseline health assessment for the workers. So you're making sure that you're getting the best worker for the job you are getting them for. We do executive health check. So exec health check is a comprehensive medical and physical health appraisal for busy workers and executives. So you know we do executive health check. We do on-site vaccination, skin check programs, fitness for duty assessment, drug and alcohol testing, and the list goes on. So the objective here is keeping your staff healthy is paramount and we help and design services to your need. 
wherein you can you know give the best you know possible outcome for your company so if you would like to learn more about any of our service or if you want us to tailor make a service which suits your company need please reach out to me you know or paul and we can you know take it from there that's it from me paul with one second to spare ram fantastic that's really, really good um and as you're saying yes yeah, such an important thing right now for for all corporates you know looking after our staff and our employees you know the uh, the talent crunch is is real for so many different companies and we have to make sure that uh, that they're all not just physically well but mentally well as well so thank you so much ram that's wonderful our next speaker is mr brett thompson uh brett is the head of corporate sales asia pacific at tag he's the guy that has slash in his background there and brett your three minutes start now well, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, hello, everyone. Nice to see you all. Uh, yeah, as Paul said, we are a travel company. Um, we began in London more than 30 years ago. We've been in Australia now for 10 years. Um, we recently ce celebrated our 10th uh, year anniversary at a party, um, which was a lot of fun. We are a travel company that's uh, probably a little bit different in terms of we have some core niche areas of expertise. So. Music being one of them, a good friend slash here. We, we look after uh, Guns and Roses amongst amongst many others um, that you probably will go and see yourselves at some point. Um, so we do the A-list travel for all those sorts of guys. We do the same sort of thing for TV and film production. So that sort of stuff is probably the sexier side of our business. The less sexy side, which is probably something that you're all accustomed to is business travel. So corporate travel, and that's where, um, you know, I, I sort of come in. So. Yeah, we, um, I head up some of the sales or new business development for us in the Asia Pacific region. Um, we do have an office in Singapore looking to grow throughout Asia as well, um, office in New Zealand as well. Um, so I think, you know, for us, we've always been a service solution business. Um, you know, you can't look after the, the needs of A-list entertainment and, you know, heavy hitter CFOs of, of, of major you know, financial services businesses if you're not kind of addressing their service needs. So that's where we've sort of excelled and that's in our DNA, if you like. Um, so that's what we we look to deliver. I think you probably would have all traveled recently and realized how bloody awful it is. Um, you know, it's still not back, prices are ridiculous uh, and it's gonna take a little while before that levels out. You know, we like to think that we we even out those bumps and, you know, our service solutions kind of definitely mean that our business is growing. Um, and that's that's something that we're we're sort of very proud of. Um, we I guess we are bucking the trend in that in that space. COVID did mean that a lot of people left travel agents, left the industry for good, and found other careers in healthcare, in particular. Um, but we did grow through that through that period, so we're very proud of that. Um, there's not a hell of a lot more I would say about about that. I don't want to I don't want to get gonged. I normally do get gonged by Paul because I talk too much. Um, but yeah, um, travel is what we do. Business travel specifically is where we can assist. And um, yeah, we have all the modern technology, um, booking portals, travel risk management portals, all those sorts of things. But um, what underlies us is our service solution and our people. Uh, and that's where we add the most value. But thanks for your time. And um, if that's of interest, then love to hear from you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Brett. And, uh, and yeah, just to, I guess, give Brett a bit of a plug as well. Brett's been a fantastic uh, resource to, to many to many of our chain members that have obviously needed help with their uh, international and domestic travel. And he's got a great team there as well. So yeah, obviously highly recommend Brett. Uh, but yeah, there'll be some good questions for you after this, particularly about obviously the Qantas announcement um, earlier this week. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Thank you very much, Brett. Um, our next speaker is Philip Harmon. Philip, have you uh, fixed your, your camera? There oh, we go. Yes, I see that. Yes. Perfect. So, Philip Harmon, he's the National Business Development Manager for Deco Australia. And, Philip, your three minutes, sir, starts now. Thank you, Paul. And uh, thank you to the uh, to the network for the opportunity of being able to talk. So, uh, um, you know, as Paul said, my name is Philip Harmon, National Business Development Manager for Deco Australia. Deco Australia is a growing family business. Uh, so, uh, been around for 18 years. So the business is actually broken up into two sections. One's the architectural section where we uh, take any, almost any aluminium profile that's available on the market, powder coat it, and then 
sublimate a finish into it. So uh, Deco is renowned for the, uh, the, the timber grain finishes, uh, but we also do uh, concrete look finishes, rust look finishes, and those aluminium profiles can be anything from decking, cladding, uh, you know, uh, battens, any, almost any aluminium profile, including flat sheets, in, which include signage. So we do a lot of the signage on uh, uh, New South Wales railway stations, for instance. So the other side of the business is more an industrial side of the business. So uh, in that side of the business, we do anodizing, hard anodizing, and we're one of the only companies within Australia that can do zero degrees hard anodizing, which is proper hard anodizing. So uh, 50, uh, 50 plus micron. Uh, so as well as anodizing, uh, of course, we do powder coating, uh, we do Teflon coating, uh, we do uh, uh, Cerakote or ceramic coatings. Uh, and in reality, the company as a whole, very customer focused company. And we like to work with our customers to come up with coding solutions that will certainly uh, you know, uh, meet the needs of our, uh, our customers. Now, in some cases, of course, we won't be able to come up with a solution, but uh, because there's certain things, you know, metal, uh, metal coatings and uh, hot spray and things like that, that we don't do. Uh, and have really no intention of doing at this stage. Uh, but any of the other types of coatings, surface treatments, uh, passivations, all of those type of uh, industrial coatings, we're uh, yeah, definitely uh, either do or willing to, uh, to work with our customers to uh, come up with a solution. Um, you know, we work with a uh, work with a lot of companies. So Savan Group is one of the local companies we work with. Uh, we're approved. We're a approved Rymatel supplier. We're very much talking to BAE, uh, you know, and uh, you know all different types of companies like that. You know, the uh, the architectural side of the business again works with builders, homeowners. Uh, and basically, uh, you know, we supply to uh, any section of the market and basically that's it. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Philip. Uh, and I actually was able to go down to the uh, the extremely impressive offices of Deco Australia uh, late last year for, a, I think it was about a three, three and a half hour tour of all the facilities there. And I had no idea about, you know, the oxidization of, of metals, things like that. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic operation, wonderful team. Uh, and as you say, you know, it's got that real family friendly um, you know, orientation there as well. So um, highly recommended. But thank you very, very much, Philip. Our next speaker is the wonderful Kerry Needling. Uh, Kerry is the principal and founder of the Bean Group, who are just going through a very, very exciting expansion into the UK market at the moment as well. Um, so, Kerry, your three minutes start now. Thank you so much, Paul. I always find it really hard doing these these sort of talks because there's so much that I need to tell you about the Bean Group. But let me give you a let me let me give it a good hot go. So the Bean Group is it's basically a marriage of a strategic consultancy and a creative agency. Um, some of our projects are typical consulting assignments, and some are purely graphic design or copywriting. But majority of our work combines the strategic and the creative. Um, we help our clients to communicate effectively, whether it's explaining a complex change or concept or a marketing message. We produce design documents, explainer videos, television commercials, websites, and even e-learning modules. Um, we have a fully integrated team of 42 creatives, consultants, and project managers across um, working in the in two different areas across London and Sydney. And we currently work with 70 private and public sector, uh, 70 private and public sector projects. We have a large team based in Millers Point here in Sydney, and we have a new small growing team in Covent Garden in London, which is incredibly exciting. Our client base is very varied across many sectors, and we feel this is a real strength as many of our clients are often your customers. So we really know how they think and feel and how they make decisions, which which I think is incredibly important. Um, I myself have had 20 years experience on the other side of agency life. Um, so I know the time and money that is wasted when you're working with various agencies to bring to life the project that you might be working on. So as I said, we have that full-time team of strategists, copywriters, designers, videographers, web developers, 
photographers, digital media experts, um, anybody that you could possibly need to support to bring any project of any size to life, all under one roof and everybody is full time. So in the last two years, we've also grown incredibly in the e-learning space. So we support people like Optus and the Fair Work Commission, Ampol, and many other really impressive organizations to bring these really complex pieces of information to life. Our clients range from the big side of town like Hitachi and Australian Taxation Office, Telstra, TAFE New South Wales and Ampol, right through to the local florist um, on the corner and the legal firm just up the road. No company is too big or too small for us um, and the size of the project, it's the same. No project is too big or small for us. So we'd love to chat about anything you might have in mind. Um, our clients needs uh, our clients need various support. Some of them need us to plug in as an outsourced marketing team, and um, they take us on on a monthly retainer basis. And others need a full brand rollout, or they might need a website built, or a twelve month marketing plan or strategy support. The list goes on and on. We can help with absolutely anything in the in the space. Um, um, introductions that I would really appreciate is any organizations that need strategy, content, and marketing support, as well as any contacts that any of you might have in the UK, particularly London, as we've got um, that team that's now growing over there. Um, our new UK office allows us to deliver projects around the clock, um, helping international organizations deliver on time and in a seamless way, which is, which is a really lovely thing to be able to offer. Um, if you're thinking of taking your marketing or comes to a, another level, please, you know, we'd absolutely love to help. Thanks, Paul. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much, Kerry. And yeah, again, I was lucky enough to go down to see their wonderful facilities down at Millers Point, the old wool sheds that are down there. Uh, absolutely beautiful facilities, but the team, uh, such a professional, uh, you know, energized, fantastic team that, you know, the projects that you've worked on, everything from, as you say, large government to, to smaller industry and I think it's refreshing when you find a company like yourself that you know will deal with the small guys as well as the big guys, but show them the same amount of uh, of, of respect that they need as well. So thank you so so much, Kerry, um, and look forward to seeing you get another event. But um, obviously, we've got a few more speakers to come. But what I would like to start people you know to do now is start germinating some good questions inside your brain. You know, it's great to ask questions uh, to our speakers. So please think of a few of those. We're either going to do those at the end where we can put them in the message chat box, which you'll have on your screen. Or obviously, if you just want to raise your hand and we'll go directly to you as well. So thank you very, very much. Our next speaker is Mr. Bo Jones. Bo is the co-founder of Valadian, uh, one of our newest members as well from uh, uh, back end of last year. So, Bo, your three minutes start now. Thanks, Paul. Hi, everybody. Uh, Bo Jones, director and co-founder here at Valadian. So Valadian is a customer obsessed management consulting firm. And what that means is we empower your business and your team to drive great customer outcomes that really last. Uh, we've been doing this for six years um, and empowering large brands like Bunnings and the AFL, along with the next wave of game changing tech companies like Safety Culture, uh, Ship It, Slip, Bright, just to name a few. Uh, for Bunnings, we help them to launch their online marketplace. For the AFL, we help them to uncover commercial opportunities for each football club's website. For safety culture, we help them to unlock commercial opportunities and better serve their existing customer base. For Climb, they're a leading funds manager. We help them to better understand their customers through data, uh, new technology through we implement and then getting internal adoption. Um, for businesses like ShipIt, we help them to do better service for their customers by empowering them to work more efficiently through better systems and processes. Um, in just three short months, increase efficiency by 32%. Uh, for businesses like Bright, we help to reposition their uh, B2B go-to-market messaging to allow their sales teams to better communicate with their customers. We then also manage their sales teams, uh, remove barriers to success, which is a big thing we do here at Valadian. And we turned a 67% sales quarter to 100% um, and they hit their sales targets, which is something that we're always really proud of helping. Um, we, at Valadian, we track the full customer lifecycle and support businesses from scoping who their customer is right through to how to sell to them and keep them on to become brand advocates. Um, we do this all by using technology to scale and grow businesses. And we'll help businesses both locally and internationally to um, doing research and validation of markets all the way through to you know, setting up and running entire Australian operations on behalf of other companies. Um, today, you know, myself and my team would love to meet other businesses that are passionate about their customers and really want to empower their businesses and their teams to support long lasting growth. Uh, thanks, and look forward to meeting you all in person soon. Cheers. Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Ben. You still had a minute to spare. 
but you did such a great job. You put everything inside two minutes. So absolutely fantastic. Um, thank you. Thank you so, so much, Bo. Well done. Um, our next speaker is the wonderful Charlie Hales. Charlie is the director at Waterstones, a longtime member of the chamber. Um, Charlie, you've done this. Uh, you've done this before, and so I expect you to be absolutely on point in three minutes exactly. So, Charlie, your three minutes start now. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I usually do it like Bo and do it really quick and talk too quickly, so I'll try not to do it this time. Um, so, yeah, I'm Charlie Hales, managing director of Waterstones in the Asia Pacific region. Um, Waterstones are a, a business, technology, and cyber consulting company that provides support services as well. Um, We've got a good um, amount of people in Australia, stumbling over my words now, you've put me off, Paul, <laughs> too much pressure. Um, we've got people in Sydney, Adelaide, uh, Melbourne and Perth, but we also have a large amount of people in Europe and we're about 300 people globally. Um, some of the newer services that we're offering are around cyber, as everyone knows, that's a hot topic at the moment. So we do anything from a cyber point of view, from cyber consulting, so that's your strategy, uh, working with the board about what they need to do. Um, it's with the IT teams, working about the, what the cyber strategy needs to be from a technical point of view, all the way through for your 24-7 operations. And one of the new offerings that I wanted to cover today, so people are aware, um, is incident response. So a lot of people these days are getting breached and not having the cyber protection in place. So they can come to us. And while if we don't know their environment, it might take us a little bit longer than usual, uh, we can help them out. But also if someone wants that protection, we can get, do it on a retainer model. So basically we have a look at your environment, we'll give you some advice. And then if the worst happens, we can help out with that. So if that's anything that people are interested, as long as everything else, please let me know. Um, but companies we've worked with, uh, particularly from a cyber point of view it's anything all up from defense to higher education manufacturing um all the way through to some really small organizations as well because like other companies have said we're not we don't only work with the big guns we work with any and no no company's too small um it's all about helping them out and working out what's right for their business as well so manufacturing organizations they'll protect their you know their their uh, their manufacturing plant it's not their emails that's most important whereas in education it's the student data so what we do is we take everything that's important to that organization and tailor it accordingly um so we'd love to work with any organization that could fit that or, or anyone who's who's not sure even where they are on their cyber journey we'll come in and do a quick analysis against the blueprint on where you are and where you need to be so if if that appeals to anyone or anyone wants some free advice please reach out and also if you hear of any companies looking for people we'd appreciate anyone putting us in touch because that's something we're really all about and we do offer free advice as well so if anyone just wants to have a free call with one of our experts um then that's absolutely free for any of the members as well happy to offer that and that's a little bit early but hopefully all right so thank you paul and thank you everyone for listening fantastic thank you so so much charlie and one thing that charlie didn't mention is she does a fantastic event called their hack and sip event oh, which i yes. think there'll be one coming up in the next in like, few months in may yeah um and that's a great opportunity to be able to go along there where they have their do we call them hackers they're ethical hackers ethical hackers there yes. we go <laughs> um, where then they can basically do a deep dive into your uh, into your system. It can be a little bit daunting because especially when you think my system's absolutely fine and then suddenly you go, no, nope, I'm in and I've already done some stuff. Uh, <laughs> but it's a fantastic event to be part of because, you know, it really sort of opens up about your business and and maybe areas that uh, the Charlie and her team can uh, can support you on before, God forbid, anything bad should happen. So thank you so, so much, Charlie. And yeah, when that event is released, we'll obviously be releasing that to all of our database as well. Thank you, Paul. Fantastic. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Nathan Rothschild. Nathan is the CEO of GTG Network. He's got that fantastic background there. Uh, can't wait to hear more about it. So, Nathan, uh, if you take yourself off mute and your three minutes start now. Perfect. Thank you for that, Paul. As opposed to Charlie, I'm a newbie to the chamber, so this is my first year. Um, been great to meet everyone so far and looking forward to forming some uh, further relationships moving forward. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of GTG Network. We started out 10 years ago in the sports data and analytics space. It's still a, an area that we're very active in um, globally, so producing a lot of fun facts and automated content around sporting events. Uh, more recently, been focusing on um, leveraging the products that we have to create sponsorable property. So today's fun facts brought to you by brand of choice. Um, likewise, we're doing um, extensive tipping and prediction games that are free to play 
all around the world. We work with the likes of the NFL, um, a number of pro teams in the US. Um, we work with a lot of sports books um, globally. So some of you have probably engaged with our products um, domestically or alternatively also uh, in the UK as well. Um, and most recently we've started, um, we've started for a few years now building branded arcade games. So that's sort of the three core divisions of that background that Paul appreciates uh, behind me that what we're looking to do and what we are doing is creating innovative advertising opportunities for brands. Um, so instead of there being a static banner ad that perhaps is um, plonked somewhere on um, digital media, it will be either a game itself that's iframed in or a QR code that leads to a, a third party URL where um, either a single game or an entire gaming destination exists. So it might be a series of games with experience points, um, levels, virtual currency, and all the games are um, designed um, bespoke to the brand that we work with. So it's not um, so much off the shelf as getting something that's specific to your brand requirements. In terms of um, some of the conversations that we've had and we've been introduced to have been a number of the airlines that are part of the, the chamber. So um, from the discussions we've been having that airlines are finding it perhaps a little bit difficult to engage with the younger demographic. Uh, consumers generally don't use um, an airline app unless they're booking a flight, checking their points balance or scanning a boarding pass. So what we would do is build either a bespoke game or a series of bespoke games that creates a digital destination and a reason to use the app five times a week instead of once every six months and using the airlines just as one, but it could be any really sector, um, that these games can be built bespoke and improve in-flight entertainment. So they can go on seatback entertainment, they can be placed inside the airline app. So uh, a lot of flexibility, very uh, broad um, product suite that we have. And I won't go on any longer, but um, anyone who wants to reach out, please do. And I can give you some branded games to play around with rather than having to listen to me speak at super speed. Thank you for that, Paul. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Nathan. And good job you, for your first time. And you, you still had 10 seconds left. But I got to tell you, Nathan, it's funny. As I'm looking at all the other screens on here, as soon as you said sports and gamification, I noticed a number of people suddenly started going, oh, what's this all about? My goodness. Yeah, that's all right, Tom. <laughs> Um, so that was that was phenomenal. I think we've already got questions starting to come through now, which is great. So we'll get to those at the end. But Nathan, well done. And thank you so, so much. Um, our next speaker is uh, Jeroen uh, Meyer. Jeroen is the Cluster General Manager of the beautiful Pan Pacific Hotels, which you can see that in his background there, that is his fantastic executive lounge up there as well. Uh, so Jeroen, your three minutes, sir, start now. Thank you, um, Paul, for the introduction. And um... Lovely to meet you all virtually. I uh, look forward to meeting you in, in, in real time. So um, as Paul said, my name is Jeroen Meyer. Uh, probably not the way you would have thought I'd pronounce it based on the spelling of it, but that's Dutch for you. Um, I am, I've been in, in Australia since 2014 and I've uh, been with the um, Pan Pacific Hotel Group uh, uh, probably you know, two years shorter than, than that. Um, so I'm the Cluster General Manager of the two properties that Pan Pacific Hotels Group has here in Sydney. Uh, one is in Darling Harbour, which the background is my club lounge on the ninth floor and the Park Royal in Parramatta. Um, we're part of the Pan Pacific Hotels Group who features three different brands. Park Royal, which would be probably most familiar to most of you um, uh, if you're familiar with them. Um, uh, Park Royal Collection, um, we have as a separate brand, which is focusing a little bit more on the up and coming trends and sustainability initiatives around it. That's probably more prominent in, um, in Singapore. Um, and then uh, Pan Pacific Hotels. Uh, so Pan Pacific Hotels, we've got one in, in um, uh, Melbourne and one in Perth at the moment, and who knows in Sydney sometime soon. Um, so I'll look after the both properties here. Um, we, we, I think Brett uh, from TAG talked about sexy and non-sexy travellers. I think they're all pretty sexy um, corporate or, uh, or, or entertainment guests. But uh, so we do all. Um, we have um, uh, large conference facilities in, in Parramatta, somewhat smaller in, in Darling Harbour, um, lovely restaurants to go with that, but um, corporate travel and entertainment travel and, and, and meetings and events business is, is, our, is our core. That's what we're here for. We're close to the, the International Convention Centre. So that's a lot of our uh, business that we do. Um, so um, just to go back a little bit to Park, uh, to, sorry, the Pan Pacific Hotels Group, there's about 50 hotels worldwide. Uh, most of them are owned by us um, and we operate them ourselves. So it's not in a management contract, which means that we, yeah, can can um, can uplift our products quite a bit quicker than in, in sometimes other cases where management agreements are in place. Um, uh, fantastic little um, yeah little, little little brand that is looking to really really grow um, 
significantly into the next couple of years. Even during COVID, we managed to open another Park Royal in uh, Monash in, in um, Park Royal Monash in, in Melbourne. Uh, so that shows the, the need of growth and the, the, the desire to grow. Um, obviously, what we're here for, we would like to be introduced to, um, to some, some of you uh, that are looking for meeting facilities, rooms, um, uh, being it through an agent or not through an agent. Um, if, you've got, if you've got, you know, networking events or things like that, we'll be more than happy to help with that. Um, so we're, um, yeah, yeah we're, we've got two strategic locations at the moment, but obviously a very, very quick um, connection to all the other properties that we've got around the world or even around Australia. So I'm really looking forward to, um, yeah, join the partnership that we've joined now and, and see where it goes for, uh, for us. This is our first year, so looking forward to it. Fantastic. And right on time there, you're in. Fantastic. Well done. And yeah, I've been down to, to both of your properties, uh, you know, both Darling Harbour and Parramatta. Absolutely gorgeous properties. Obviously, Parramatta, so much going on there at the moment. Just a short distance away from the new Wynn Stadium that's just up the road from there and the theatres and everything else. And uh, yeah, you know, Parramatta is really taking off in a, in a new vibe at the moment as well, which is uh, which is fun on both for corporate as well as leisure. So definitely, uh, you know, hit uh, hit your own up and uh, and go and have a look at the properties there for both meetings as well as uh, uh, accommodation. So thank you very much, Jeroen. Our final speaker is coming up next. So please, obviously, as I say, start thinking of some great questions for our speakers. I see that Charlie, yourself, and Tom have already been uh, engaging over there, which is fantastic. So again, anybody else, you can put messages on there or ask them directly. So our final speaker, no no pressure now, Dom. You've got to finish this off with a bang, is Dom Roberts, Dominic Roberts. He's the director at Claro. And Dom, your three minutes, sir, start now. Thanks, Paul, for the intro. Good to meet you all virtually. So we saved the best for last, clearly. Um, so uh, as, as Paul mentioned, uh, I'm the director in a business called Claro. We are a um, three and a half year old startup recruitment business. We provide recruitment and talent solutions um, across Asia Pacific. Um, the business commenced in, um, in November 2019, just before COVID, uh, but has grown considerably over the past three years. Um, starting off with a, with a Sydney office and, and then expanding into, uh, into Hong Kong and, uh, and, and Melbourne. Um, we were soon to open up an office in Singapore. And, um, um, we, you know, so we cover Australia wide and, and such well. So our service offering started um, in the tech sector, which is my background. I'll go into that in a minute. And um, we've since expanded from tech and digital into uh, sales and marketing and uh, finance and banking. Um, I myself um, started my career 23 years ago and um, I started in the, in the telecoms and tech sector and then I've, I've sort of moved more into professional services. So my existing clients are, are people like um, uh, a couple of the big four, I'll keep nameless for now, but a couple of the big four companies and some mid-tier firms. So I actually specialize in the, uh, now I specialize in the audit sector. And um, so we, uh, we offer clients a range of services, not just recruitment, but we do a lot of services around salary benchmarking, uh, talent mapping, and also site profiling, which is an area that a lot more clients are coming to us to, 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 to discuss. Um, the biggest issue that clients are facing at the moment is that they've panic hired over the past 18 months. And uh, they're now starting to figure out that the, the profiles of the people that they've brought on board are not the, not the best. And, and they're now having to, to, to realign their team. So we choose to work with a smaller client base, um, focusing on, on quality as opposed to quantity. That said, some of the clients that we work with um, are, are people like Qantas, Dropbox, Macquarie Bank, NAB, and, uh, and I will mention one, uh, PwC. And, um, you know, we've managed to win those companies largely off the back of the success that we, that we create. So I've been brought into the company to, um, to drive growth across Australia. Um, my Australian business was acquired by Claro uh, very recently. And, um, you know, we, we want to win probably some more business, I think, in the SME sector as well. It's, it's been a, a bit of a whirlwind in that regard. So very keen to chat to anybody who um, who are struggling in, in any sectors with uh, with, with any um, information that they're, they're needing around their employee base and such forth. So I'm quite happy to connect and, and discuss further. Fantastic, Don. Thank you very much. Just on time there as well. So wonderful. 
uh, and a great way to finish up the session as well. So we have 15 minutes now for some uh, for some great question and answers from uh, from from uh, all of our attendees. But also, if any of our speakers would also like to ask our other speakers questions as well. But but maybe I'll start uh, and I'll go to both Tom and Dom, uh, because obviously, even though you both work in recruitment, obviously two different areas as well. Um, it'd be good to hear your viewpoint on, you know, at the moment, everybody keeps talking about, you know, the, the, the talent pool, which is no longer a talent pool, it's a talent, talent puddle. Everybody's looking for staff, everybody's crying out for, for them. And, and it seems now at the moment that the, uh, the shoe is very firmly on the, uh, the recruitee's foot rather than the recruiter. Obviously, you know, they're getting to dictate what they want and, and, and how much money they want, things like that. How are you finding it at the moment to fill those roles that are that are so desperately needed is it is it still a bit of a, a stretch at the moment i think uh, i think uh, dom actually made a really good point there where people have been making panic hires um where we've been in a bit of a rebound economy and we've created this shortage these puddles ourselves um and the, a lot of the candidates that left do have a uh, inflated sense of of ability if you like a sense of entitlement which is making it very difficult to tr transact um, but the, the, I think the pendulum is swinging back ever so slightly now. Okay, we've got a bit of a strange financial year ahead of us. People are looking after their jobs and what they're doing. Um, and obviously, the last in tends to be the first out as well, uh, if you've uh, got a high price tag on you. So, um, yeah, the market's shifting a little bit back to a recalibration, I'm finding anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I also think that in not just in panic hiring, but but in the, in the war for talent, companies have obviously offered significantly more salaries, uh, and 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 it's been well documented in the media recently, and and it's really uh, it's put the industry off kilter. So you've got, and I don't mean this as any disrespect to anyone, uh, you know, who's been job seeking, but you've got average candidates who were good but but not great, and they've been offered significant amounts of money. Their expectations now, when they when they are looking for a new role, is is way out. So, we are going through a correction. Um, it'd be interesting to see how this year goes. But we've for us and for for the way that I operate, I've opened up a talent pool in in the UK. We've managed to so, so we've got a partnership in the UK with a firm that I commenced many years ago. Um, so we're we're doing very well bringing candidates into Australia as well, and and, and just sort of bridging the talent gap in some respects, offering consulting services to clients uh when it comes to sponsorships and uh, and, and such forth so you know it's you are right paul it's it's very much in the it's a candidate driven market they are in control but but they'll they're very quickly realizing that the salaries they've been offered are um are a little bit um unrealistic compared to where the market is now yeah yeah as you say yeah hopefully this uh, the pendulum starts to swing again because yeah there's so many companies that are crying out for staff across all industry sectors uh, but now maybe we'll we'll make a shift and go to uh, to travel. So you know, I guess you know yourself, Brett, and Yaroon. How's it all looking now? You know, are we back to where we were pre-COVID? You know, uh, even though air prices are still astronomical. I mean, you know, a flight from Sydney to Melbourne now is costing you know sort of almost a thousand dollars for a return flight, which is absolutely ridiculous. But are you finding that travel is back? You know, are the hotel rooms full, are the flights full? What's what do you see? They both jump in at the same time. <laughs> Don't want to jump in ahead of you, mate. Yeah. No, look, I think, um, yeah, hotel rooms are definitely full at the moment. Um, uh, occupancies are really, really picked up. Uh, good for us um, in, in the city. You know, we've got World Pride on. There's there's, there's events that really drive that. Um, uh, we we are really getting back to, to I guess, occupancy levels and, and, and rates as before before COVID, it's still, it's still a bit fragile. I think um, there's a bit of a change in the mix coming through from international, a bit more international than obviously we had um, over the last couple of years, um, but that is slowly going. There's still, you know, there's still restraints on demands into, um, onto um, uh, flights into the, into the country, as you said. Um, luckily, there's enough demand coming through domestically um, at this stage, but we do anticipate that tapering off a bit with when the international is starting to come back a little bit more. Um, yeah, we've seen some cruise ships coming through, which is great that, you know, that, that, that all helps, but there's, that's not, yeah, we're not back at international levels where it was, but it's definitely helping that there's uh, plenty of domestic travel happening. Um, and then, yeah, maybe a bit of, um, uh, revenge travel at the same time. <laughs> uh, Brett, what about you? Yeah, look, I think from our perspective, it's, um, you know, we kind of bucked the trend through COVID in that everyone was watching a lot of television and, and 
and uh, you know streaming services, right? So a lot of that production was kind of being pushed through pipelines, and you know television productions were kind of increasing. So we actually grew through COVID. Um, funnily enough, we were probably the only travel management company to do that. Um, so yeah, yeah, look, we we have seen um, definitely that revenge travel. Um, we, we've definitely seen corporates bounce back. I think from a SME perspective, a lot less, you know, risk averse. Probably the your MNCs, your globals that you know that may have a little bit more trepidation around kind of exposing all of their employees to you know to their business travel policies. But um, look, I think you know for the most part of it, it was a really aggressive return last year, and uh, I think you know I, I mean in comparison to probably some of the other bigger TMCs, we we're probably a little bit more fortunate that we you know we could manage that return um you know quite well without without kind of having too much of an impact on our business because you know we didn't have to recall um thousands of employees so you know we're fortunate in that in that um perspective and and i guess you know with our niche kind of levels of expertise across what we do you know we we, we have definitely seen a, a, an aggressive rebound in music touring um i'm sure some of you have been out and enjoyed a gig or two which has been fun, um, you know, and, and and a lot of that sort of sort of thing in terms of that and that entertainment space has been kind of pretty pretty full on for us uh, mm. for some time now. But corporate definitely, you know, really really returning, and, and I think we've kind of seen it continue on from last year, the start of this year. So so that's really encouraging. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of interest in, in kind of working with us as well. So it's really good for our business. Conferencing and events also a really big thing. Um, we're doing a lot of those globally as well. So, and they go hand in hand with corporate and business travel, right? So yeah, it's been pretty positive for us. You know, I think, yeah, we, we, we kind of, we, we face, you know, a lot of the issues with availability as you all do, but, um, I think it's, you know, it, for us, it's kind of around finding solutions for our customers. So that's what we, we try to help wherever we can. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's fun time navigating this incredibly expensive period, but I think a lot of the really important analysts out there are kind of sort of, you know, saying maybe six months, but, you know, maybe it'd be more like kind of towards the end of the year, we start to see some kind of normalised pricing, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. No, fantastic. Thanks very much, man. And Fred, Fred's always a great one for, for questions. So Fred, I see you got your hand up there, yeah, please. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thanks, Paul, and everyone else. Thanks for all the presentations. I had a couple of questions, please, for Ram and Aspen. Um, I recall that during COVID, uh, Aspen was running some of the, for the government, some of the vaccination clinics. Are you still doing that? And have you got the bivalent um, vaccine? That's the first question. The second, perhaps more important, is with everything that's been happening in Turkey, are you, which is, I think, how you now pronounce it, um, are you involved in providing outsourced um, medical facilities because they're overwhelmed at the moment? And I know you've been doing things in the past with uh, with uh, the defence forces and so on. Ram? No, oh, Ram, please don't tell me you're not there now. Fred's asking two great He's questions. Gone. <laughs> He's gone. He'll come okay. back. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to him, Fred. Uh, okay, I'll ask... Uh, um, Dom, a question, if I could, please, um, or rather, Tom. Uh, Tom, you mentioned you had different models, but you scoted over what those models were. Could you briefly explain what those three models are, please? Yes, there's three core models, but ultimately we still, uh, we've still got bespoke offerings. Um, the main model is the traditional model, which essentially is no win, no fee. It's the model that everybody knows agency recruitment for. Um, which is a percentage of the salary um, and variations of that. Um, so that that's still our bread and butter. Um, we have a low cost option, which is it's not a discount; it's a completely different service. Um, the people that have taken us on that are the sole traders, uh, the, the 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 startups and early stage businesses that are deserving of agency help. It's, don't can't necessarily afford the, the all the full bells and whistles of the additional model, and the third option is a subscription model, um, which is a twelve month subscription. Um, they're tiered for uh, for slightly different services, but 
what we're finding, this one sits slightly in the middle. So as long as you're planning to hire more than one person over a year, then you're going to be financially up with that. Plus you put your payments in bite size uh, amounts. And that's proven very popular right now. That's the one that's just going gangbusters for us. Um, people like the idea of not having one big bill turn up and, and having to deal with that at the time. Um, and in some cases, it works out cheaper than even just the advertising yourself. So it becomes a, a relative no-brainer. Um, I'm happy to share this information. Um, it's, it's something that's very easy to comprehend and do your number crunching. But they're all fit for different stages of businesses and different requirements for the year. So if you know what you're planning for the year, then the, the model would talk to you, if you like. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Fred, could you put your um, your one on mute? Yeah, thanks very much. I think there's a bit of feedback there, but uh, thank you so much. And if anybody else has any more questions, obviously, please do either put up your hand or put them in the in the chat box as well. Uh, but maybe, Kerry, if I go over to yourself, you know, right now, marketing, it's, you know, it's a massive area for, for every company. Every company wants to get their branding out there. and But the problem is not a lot of companies maybe have too much faith in allowing a different company to do it for them because they feel that they're, they're, they're too much into it themselves. So... You know, what, what is the biggest challenge or what is the biggest, uh, you know, mistake that most marketing people make when they try and do it themselves and don't consult, you know, an expert like yourself? Yeah, I think it's it's probably exactly that. They keep going for a really long time doing it in-house. And I think there's a real benefit in bringing an agency in that can help you to really zoom out and look at everything as a big picture. Something that we're really good at is pulling together 12 month marketing calendars and running really big strategic workshops. And sometimes that's all we do. So we pull in their team, we get our team together and we just talk about the year ahead or the next five years and what that needs to look like. And then help, help them with the really strategic report or, or plan afterwards. And sometimes that's enough, then that's enough for the team to go away and work on. Um, for others, obviously we zoom in a little bit closer and give them all the support that they need. But I think they don't realize even just a little bit of help can make the world of difference. You know, whether it's providing people with templates it's not necessarily they need an organization that's going to come in and do everything sometimes the internal team just needs a bit of support on the side and we can just give them that little top up with great templates if they use canva or it doesn't matter what it is we're prepared to kind of swoop in and support them but yeah i think when people see the difference when they get a little bit of support from us versus trying to go it alone and um, they kind of wish that they'd, that they'd engaged us much earlier on yeah no, fantastic. And as you say, you know, it's just good to have those conversations so you can give your expertise before even, you know, uh, starting up that work process. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and Charlie, obviously your industry right now, cybersecurity, I mean, everything, you know, it's, it's it's happy days for you right now, isn't it? With everybody that's getting hacked. I mean, it's, it's where you keep going up to companies saying, I told you so. I mean, I wouldn't say happy days, but it's certainly <laughs> keeping us busy. <laughs> certainly not. Yeah, it can be a bit um, stressful when um, obviously there is someone coming in with an attack. You've got to make sure you're, you know, coordinated and organised with making sure that you contain it as quickly as possible. Um, but what I'd say is a big positive is more and more companies are uh, addressing it now and realising it's a problem. Um, and it's it historically it's been IT teams saying we need to do something about this, but not getting the funding or the buy-in or anything like that. But now boards actually recognise it's part of their problem. Um, so yeah, they're really when it comes from them, it's obviously getting a lot more focus. And people are as well, people that historically think this is a massive thing to do. There's so much tech we need to implement, there's all this. It, it doesn't need to be that big. It's working out what's right for your business. And the biggest thing I'd say to everyone on the call, the first thing I'd start with was training your employees because you can put in all the tech in the world, but if you haven't taught them not to click that link or if they do accidentally do something to shout about it quickly, then, you know, you can put in all the technology in the world. It's not going to not gonna stop it. So, so yeah, it's it's busy, but, but as I say, good busy because pe it's because people are doing something about it. No, exactly, yeah. Um, and as I say, looking forward to the next hack and sip because yes. <laughs> I'd even like us to uh, to be part of that and see what. Uh, obviously, but we're perfect here in the chamber, so don't worry about it. Obviously. Yeah, people are nervous about it to start. For a, a private uh, private session, maybe. Yeah, well, people are nervous at the start, but we do it in little booths so no one can see what's actually going on, and then everyone has drinks and network and things, and the guys just have a look, and then obviously just give you advice on yeah. where maybe you want to start. No, oh, fantastic. And uh, and I guess maybe I'll just ask one last question then, and maybe uh, over to yourself, Nathan, at uh, GTG Network. Obviously, love the gamification of what you're doing, and obviously, you know, starting in sport, but now going for those companies that have that large customer base that, that want more interaction with. 
So when we have a look at, say, large corporate companies, is that the same thing with them? It's not just, you know, the, the sexy industries like the airlines and the hotels and the you know, sports companies. Is it also large corporates as well and, and what they're doing to interact with air? It is. Um, that what we're um, seeing is, that, and this is sort of a, a more recent addition to, you know, the product and service that GTG offer, that traditional forms of advertising and engaging with consumers have, yeah, I think there's wide acknowledgement that they're a little bit old school. So the ability to create high levels of engagement through more modern or digital channels um, are pretty well received across the board. And that's what we're focusing on is just doing something a little bit different to allow our business to grow in that particular division. Mm. Well, we'd love to see some of these uh, these games sure. that you've got. And, and I'm sure, you know, obviously when I send out all of our speakers' uh, uh, contact details, including yourself, Nathan, uh, it'd be a great opportunity for all of our attendees to, to go to Nathan and make, maybe Nathan, if you want to share a few of those with the, with them, so we can all play that on our, on our long commutes into the office and things like that. But um, I might leave it there because obviously I'm conscious of time. Uh, but first and foremost, I'd like to thank all of our tremendous speakers. Um, if you've never done this before yourselves, trust me, a three minute time slot can either go very, very quickly or it can go very, very slowly. But there's so much you want to pack into that three minute time slot. So I think you all did an absolutely phenomenal job. As I've said before, the, the Chamber, what we've always said about you know, our members and, and contacts at the Chamber, it's about us all reaching out and seeing how we can support one another. So I would definitely say, you know, once I send out all the contact details for all of our speakers, I implore you all to connect, uh, you know, build up those relationships, see how we can support each other, or just you know, build up those relationships for, uh, for a, bit of, uh, uh, a bit of fun as well. Um, but I'd like to thank all our speakers again. Fantastic job. Here at the Chamber, we've still got so many fantastic events throughout the rest of this year. Uh, please go onto our website to see. We've got our International Women's Day Breakfast, which is going to be unbelievable across the country. Uh, we've got the Lord Mayor of the City of London. Uh, we'll be doing stuff around sport as well. Obviously, there's a few uh, big sporting events taking place here in Australia, like the Women's World Cup and the, and, uh, the Rugby World Cup. Uh, so, yeah, please have a look on our website at all the events taking place. We'd love to see you at those and continue to networking. But thank you all so, so much for joining us again. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And if I can be of any assistance or our wonderful team are on the call, I know that Matt's on the call, Matt Joyce from Victoria, uh, Samantha in Queensland, um, and I think Linda from WA was on the call as well. Please let us know. And we look forward to seeing and, uh, and being with you all again very, very soon. So thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Paul. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.